This is a quick introduction to Pocket Timer Pro, the complete race timing and scoring solution for Android and Kindle devices. This is the basic timing screen as you see. And when a race starts, you just hit start and you're ready to start recording racers. Now, while the time is going and the race has just started, let's look at what goes into that. You have to set up categories for the race and you can enter them by hand here by entering a name for the category. There are handicaps if different categories start at different times like often the case in triathlons. And you can set up to six different races uh, so you can actually time six races simultaneously including with separate starts such as perhaps you have a half marathon and a marathon running simultaneously. So you can enter these all by hand. But a simpler way is if you have a text file on a computer somewhere, you can actually just download those from a website or from your computer and enter them all in. The same is true with the entrance for the race. You can enter them by hand, entering in a bib number, uh, their age, their sex, their last name, their first name, uh, their city, which is optional. Again, a, a handicap if you want. Uh, for if somebody starts at a different time, that's particularly useful for time trial races, for cycling. And then you set, uh, select the category for that particular racer, uh, male, 20 to 29, and so on. Again, we're not going to do that here, but simply import those as one would often do because you entered, you actually have a spreadsheet or a database on your desktop where you were entering people as they registered for the race. And then you can just import them directly from your website or from a computer. So now we've got all our racers entered. And now we can go back to timing the race. And now uh, the time's a little short right now and we'll, we'll ignore that fact, but we'll start recording racers. So here comes racer number one. We can see it's Jean Palmier, even before he's crossed the finish line, so we can announce his name. And then just at the moment he crosses the finish line, we just hit record and we've recorded his uh, his finish over there. And then we have, let's say, racer number 23 is coming in and maybe number 45 or 4 and then 56. And you can see you can actually record uh, times quite rapidly. If you made an error, you notice no, I just recorded 87 and that wasn't apparently anyone who was entered in the race and perhaps I misread it and it was 67. So we can just tap there and edit the, edit the number and make a correction while the race is going on. That was Chuck Wilson. Now while the race is going on, we can actually go look at the results for the race and there they are. We see the places, the times for the racers, uh, their paces which are uh, ridiculous in this case because the time is really too short, uh, the name and city, the division and place for each runner, and the sex place. Notice that the, the division place is, is blanked out in some cases and that's because uh, in this particular scoring setup, which is optional, we've set it so that the people who win their division, the people who win overall races, are excluded from also winning their division. So that's why the division place is a, is a dash here. We can change that. There are many options for scoring, which we'll sh uh, just take a quick look at. So if we go back to the scoring options, we can see that here we've excluded the top N, which is three in this case, male and female racers from their division scoring. We can also remove that. And now if we go back and look at the scoring, we'll see that Jean Pamier and Mitsui Ito and Captain Kirk Boisery were all first in their division because they're no longer excluded even though they were the top three overall in the race. Notice the times are kind of strange here and that's because uh, some of these racers had individual handicaps and that is they actually started an hour before the, or two before the race started so that uh, their time has been incremented by that. It's a little confusing at first glance. Now we can go back to timing the race and, and oh before we and here comes another here comes racer 74 let's say and we can record that racer. Go back and look at the results again. Notice that racer has slotted in above the other two who actually finished before uh, her but because they started early their actual time their full time has, has been corrected. Now while the race is still running, we can actually uh, go to the export screen and we can upload those results directly to the web. 
And there, there they go. So now the website actually has the complete results, uh, even while the race is in progress. So we can go back to timing the race. Even what, if the upload took a long time, we can go back to timing the race. Okay, we've skipped ahead in time. And we're actually uh, almost nine hours into this race now. This is a 50 kilometer foot race. And here comes the last racer, number 71. There's this fellow. And we record that time. There he is. Again, we can go look at the results. There they are. Not, th this is just uh, the overall results. We can also look at the results by age group, uh, different, different, different age groups here. Or we can look at the uh, male and female results. And when we're ready, we can hit the upload button and upload those results directly to the web. There they go. And if we switch over now to the to a browser, we can see that, let's hit refresh just to show that we, we just uploaded those results. And there's the results, not just, there's the overall results showing the, uh, the place, the time, the pace, the bib number, which is important because in case there's mistakes, that can help you correct mistakes, the name and city, the age, the division in place, and the sex place. Then uh, each division, the male results, female results, male masters, because we can, that's an optional, you can score the masters as well, female masters, and then the different age groups, male 20 to 29, male 30 to 39, female, and so on and so forth. So all the results posted directly to the web from the race site while the race is in progress, or in this particular example, just as the race uh, finished the last racer. Now there's, there's, there's one more variation I'd like to show in this brief demonstration, and that is the case of races which include laps or intermediate aid stations, which are not necessarily the same distance apart, but we'll call them laps in this case. So now I've imported uh, a longer set of times. You can see there's actually 207 times have been recorded. It's the same uh, racers here, but each one has passed through uh, three intermediate aid stations and then finally the finish line, all of which have been recorded and combined here into this timing chart. So now we can go over to the uh, scoring options in the settings and we'll see we have been scoring using the longest time but one option is the nth time that is uh, n laps. Another option by the way for races in which you don't have to finish all the laps sometimes there's if the winner finishes 50 laps but you can also be second or third if you only finish 49 or 48 laps you can accommodate that as well, but that's not uh, in this particular case. And we have four required laps in this example. So now we're done, and now if we go over to the results, uh, the results are there. We, we, didn't, we forgot to do one thing, however, and that is we also, in the scoring, want to include the laps in the results. We want to show them in the printout and we also want to show the laps as differences. That is each lap as its own time rather than the cumulative time. Either one of those is, is an option. So now here's the results and here's our finishers and we can see all four laps uh, as each one of them finished uh, the race. So that's a brief introduction to Pocket Timer Pro. You can read the full details about all the features of the software on our website.